than a mile I'm crossing you in style Someday Old dream maker You heart breaker Wherever you're going I'm going your way to drifters all to see the world there's such a lot of world to see we're after the same Well, good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of the life of Harold. It's an important moment for each of us to take some time out and to really celebrate, to let those memories touch us, so that, again, we can be grateful and not take this uh, great man for granted who has clearly touched so many people. I'm Father Paul, and I'm Anne's parish priest, so I've got the great privilege of also leading through and for those who do have faith, we also then include an element of hope and looking forward. But to begin, we start with some reflections, and so I invite Rob and John Ford to introduce Alan. Hello, family and friends. I bear greetings from and sorrow from Sun Valley. It's been my beautiful home and playground for near 50 years now. This is a day to celebrate, but with sadness, of Harold's passing. It's just incredible to think that for over 80 years I've actually known Harold, and yet I haven't seen him that much, just now and again. But those valuable times with him were marvelous. He had incredible insight and wisdom. It was quite uncanny. And it had a great bearing on the outcome of my life. I always wanted to please him, as I'm sure the whole family did. Harold was the roof over the family. It was decidedly propped up by Anne. And Anne, thank you for loving my brother. I've always appreciated it. So on behalf of my lovely Helen and I, we wish you all well. And sorry we can't be with you on this day, but sooner or later the gates will be open and surely we'll visit you all. Bye for now. Thank you, Al. Mr. Harold Robert Penne, born in 1935, Dalban, the 20th of April, son to Don and Ivy Penne. Alan was born in 1937 in Goulburn as well. In 1940, they moved to Queanbeyan to McKechnie Street, where they grew up there. They went to Queenbeyan High School 
Then Harold was conscripted in 1954 to go to national service. He led a lot of his mates at national service. And if you've heard Dad talk about Nasho's stories, you'd understand what I meant. In 1954, he also got his car's driver's licence, which he held for 67 years. In 1956, he went on a trip to New Zealand, where he turned 21, working over there, partying and working in a tobacco plantation. When he came back from New Zealand, Phil Coleman, the owner of JB Young's, rang him and offered him a job, which he took in 1957 for 30 years. He quickly moved up the corporate ladder, travelling Australia and the world, buying clothes for the stores to sell. Local and then area manager, he had a company car and would drive long distances to drop into a store just on the cuff. So be careful if Harold dropped into your store. That being said, he was always fair and had great circuit, sorry, had a great circle of rag trade friends. In 1958, he joined Ainsley Football Club. 63 years he was there. After years being in the club, the president of the club David Layla rang and asked him that he was looking for someone on the board of the directors with business skills. Harold accepted. He spent 17 years on the board, not retiring until he turned 30. Oh, excuse me, 70. Try <laughs> again. 70. <laughs> not retiring until he turned 70. In 2006, the Ainsley Group made him a life member and he had that for 15 years. His badge number was seven, which he was very proud of. Ainsley Football Club and Social Club put a wonderful notice in the newspaper last week, and I would like to read a paragraph from it. During Harold's outstanding service, the Ainsley Football and Social Club experienced substantial expansion and improvement to the club's facilities. He was central on the construction of the Gungahlin Lakes Golf and Community Club. This is not goodbye. Your memories will live on, although you'll be sadly missed as a friend, mentor, family friend and all-round good bloke. And H told me to say that he did play baseball for them as well. <laughs> in 1961, they bought a boat called Victor J with his great ma mates, Dick, Bob, Ray and Alan. This became the original water ski crew. John's going to talk about, a bit more about that in a minute. In 1961, he married Anne Josephine Dykes for nearly 60 years. Hal and Anne did everything together. Once again, some of the, James is going to talk about that. In 1964, I, Robert, was born. In 1968, John was born. In 1970, his other big passion, he joined the Rotary Club for 51 years. Harold loved his Thursdays night out, Thursday nights out. For the first 21 years, women wouldn't allow, sorry, women weren't allowed in the meetings. Not sure what to say about that. <laughs> he was president in 1977 and again in 2018 for the 50th gold anniversary of the club. In 1978, Harold took a team of six to Canada for six weeks for Rotary. Most will, will be here today who went. During that time, they did presentations every night on business and other things they'd learned about Australia. 
1972, Liza came to join our family. This was a great day. Her big smile, her spirit, and her love to her ever since. In seventy-five, penniless came for Christmas. What a best present ever. <laughs> 1981, Raiders started playing. He was a member for 40 years. I married Dee in 1989. H welcomed her and admired her. Dee worked with and for H for over 25 years. 1992, I came up to him with an idea of buying Gibbs Auto Electrics. The guy who had it was having a breakdown and just wanted out. This fitted in with H's buying policy. <laughs> Buy at the right price. H worked for me for two years every day. He did all the accounts by hand and I fixed the cars. And we never argued ever. 29 years. In 1991, Jackie, my firstborn, in 1991, Jackie was born my first and Harold's first grandchild, then Shannon and Britt. 2000, even, Mia was the first of John's and then Jay and Kai. In 2003, Casey's first, and then came Chelsea. The family kept growing, with Adrian and Jess. Then, in 2019, Charlie, great-granddaughter, first of Shannon's, first for Harold. Then came Harper, as we've called her now, Little H, which she has the same birthday as Harold. In 1995, Harold decided, after I taught him how to run an auto electrical workshop, <laughs> that he was going to become a property developer. He bought two blocks of land in Ainsley and was going to build nine units on them. A few weeks after he lodged the application, he rang me and said, squatters have moved in. This is your fault because you took some roof tiles off the shed to make a kid's cubby house. <laughs> so we went over there, there was rubbish everywhere, and a guy came out from hiding in the toilet. He wasn't very big, so the two of us were able to throw him out and threw his mate stuff all out on the front lawn as well. We screwed the door shut with the electric drill so no one could come back in again. And as we were walking out the back door, there was a giant standing in the doorway. Our hearts sank. We thought we were going to have a big fight. Then he says, who is Harold Pano? I'm here to do a house demo report. So he was on our side. <laughs> H sold the units. All was good. Johnny's going to continue from here, but I've got one last thing to say. Everyone in life has a mentor and mates. H's mentor, say that again. H's mentor was Keith Hernan, owner of the classic football jumper. H's life mates include Dick Cater. So look after him. Thank you, H. Thank you, Dad. Thanks, Rob. I'll try and continue on. It's, uh, it's so hard to actually put dates on everything because he transcended decades of things that happened. So I'll have to backtrack on a couple of things here and there, but I think you'll hopefully get the point. So just touching on again, married for 59 and a half years. What an achievement for both parties. Particularly well done, Mum. <laughs> Everyone laughs, they got the joke. As Rob said, Dad was a loyal member of Rotary, 
and barring sickness, Dad attended just about every single meeting in all of those 50 years, regardless even if it was his second son's birthday on some of those Thursday nights. <laughs> so birthday cake had to be moved to the next day, but I'm OK, I'm over it. <laughs> 1987, um, Dad uh, had a change in career and effectively started working on his own. Dad had a bold idea to take on a big share market portfolio position and manage it like a business moving forward. Dad had a meeting with the bank and he was advised not to do it. But Dad being Dad thought, what would some young upstart banker know? And he did it anyway. As it turned out, he managed that position very success successfully over all these years. At the same time, Mum and Dad won a tender to design and build Macquarie Child Care Centre. With a tonne of work, it was again a great success and so much so that they extended and doubled in size after just two years and then they held on to it for the next 16 years. Good Hope. Where do I start with Good Hope and water skiing? And as we all know, it had such a massive impact on so many of our lives here. As Rob mentioned, thanks to Bob, Dick, Ray and Dad for buying the first boat and taking all the families out there and now lifelong friendships have been forged. Just a quick family story of our common penne family, how a common penne family weekend went. Midweek, I would always ask Dad if we could go out on Friday afternoon, and he would say, work comes first. And he did mean that. But he would say, let's see if I get home in time. He obviously had it all pre-set up with mum in advance. As a kid waiting to see if he came home in time, and then hearing the car reverse up the driveway, I would think, yes, we're on. And like a military operation, we packed the car, Rob had the boat hooked up and we were off in what seemed like a matter of minutes, out to beat the sun. Once we arrived again, the military operation continued, unpacked the van, unpacked the car, unhooked the boat, grabbed the ski gear, down the boat ramp, rolled old penniless at speed into the water where we, we were all set. Rob took his position on the left, Liza in the middle and me on the right. Hit it was the call and off we would go and be skiing before sunset. As a kid, at that exact point in time, with your mum and dad in the boat and off skiing with your brother and sister on a hot Friday afternoon, life just couldn't get any better. Or could it? Getting up the next morning early and watching dad, Bob, Ray and Dick do the barefoot loop around Good Hope Basin on a glass calm water morning, for me at that time was just wow. And I knew I wanted to do that one day. Not to mention all the club race days, skiing with your mates all day, the wind, the sunburn, the mud. And finally, as the sun set again, the dads piled all the kids in the boats and off for a river bath with a soap on a rope. Back now to the barbecue where all the families ate together as a fire drum got going and the stories and fun continued until late in the night. And as we know, this passed through not just a few years for dad, but for decades and he loved it. I'd like to make a special mention and share a few other families outside the originals who you might know that made that 40 years with Dad out the river so memorable, and this is in no particular order. Bradleys, Cannons, Hollies, Ferriers, Brawns, Barretts, Tyndales, Kellys, Blomfields, Nashes, Careys, Doblingers, Martins, Stumbles, including Darrell and Craig's families, Gillards, Donahues, Connors, Lorentz, Locks, Reeves, Trevilians, Corsons, and not to mention all the Hume Park crowd. On a quick personal barefooting note with Dad, Dad always encouraged me with all types of skiing, but I obviously love barefooting. I could tell you a hundred stories of things that Dad and I shared over the many years of tournaments, of ups and downs, but I think this one is typical of how Dad's wisdom comes through in the strangest times and can chart the course of your life. I was about 18 and I'd been really trying hard for a long time to make it my way in the sport. And one day he said, what's up? And I said, I don't know if I'm wasting my time with all this. My mates are all buying cars, all going out. Other young barefooters were going to America in their bid to make it. And I'm sitting here and I can't even make the team. I can't win anything, et cetera, et cetera, and just generally having a whinge. He said to me right there and then, do you still like doing it? I said, yeah, I love it. He said, do you like training hard? I said, yeah, again, I love it. Do you think you're gonna get better? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, the way I see it, 
until the day comes where you don't like doing it, you don't want to train anymore, you don't think you can get any better, just keep going and see where you finish up. It was like a sports psychology session and without, me, and without him telling me directly what to do, what he actually said was this, son, if you think you can, you can. Keep trying hard, I support you 100%, don't quit, keep going and see where you end up. Plus, don't worry about all the other stuff. Dad right there gave me the mental freedom to push on for the rest of my career. And we ended up going okay. And I can't thank him enough for that. Molly Milk 2003 was purchased. Friendships mainly with the Blomfields, Hanlons and Whites and many others. Hundreds of rounds of golf, thousands of games of crib, visits to basically every restaurant in the area many times over, and many family holidays and weekends. He loves standing on the de front deck, watching all his grandkids get all their beach gear, boards, towels, footballs, etc., all loaded up, and off we'd go to the beach and have a great day out. He was proud to have been able to provide a place for all, us all to have great family memories. Also, just last Christmas, Mum made the call for us to go down there for Christmas, just in case something out of the blue like this happened. Mum, I'm so glad you did. Ioani and Skins Golf, and that started back in 1995 after his 60th birthday. Dad, Max Jensen, Jim Mundy, Kevin Malone, Terry Kelly, John Spencer, Peter Bradley, Dave Fairley, Peter Hanlon, Bushy Devorno, myself, and then later Vern, playing golf for over 25 years at Ioani. With Dad walking 18 holes twice a week, Dad seemed like he was stuck in a time tunnel. It seemed he was happy with all facets of his life and everything he had worked for was just right. His business was good, his family was good, his life was good. He just didn't seem to age. And we loved this energy and positive outlook. As Rob said, Raiders since 1982, footy days with the Caters, Whites, Nashes, Rob and Phil, the Lorentz, Careys, just to name a few. Oh, and always the Martin boys on Tigers games days. It was, always, it was always a fun day out on night, win, lose or draw. But I think the highlight was recently at Canberra Stadium in 2019 final against South, where Dad took out the corporate box for us all and the Raiders won through to the grand final. It was without a doubt the best footy night ever. Finally, the sanctuary uh, since 2002. New friendships were formed and particularly with Dr John next door. John told me a story just over the weekend how he would have a special knock on the door, so Dad knew it was him. John would often pop in, Hal, have you got a minute? I want to run something past you. Those chats happened two to three times a week, he said, and could last from 20 minutes to sometimes four hours with a Chinese meal and a bottle of red thrown in. Oh, and yes, and of course, Dad's one for the road, John. John said Dad was always available, very knowledgeable, but humble. He never once talked himself up, or he never said the word I. But Dad talked everybody else up. He was proud of his friends, he was proud of his colleagues, and he was proud of his family. Finally, John said Dad was such a great friend, and he will leave a huge hole that everybody in the complex loved being around him, and he'd be greatly missed. Just in a quick conclusion, and I can, I can hear Dad now saying, Johnny, get on with it. So I will. But it's hard to be quick when you touch so many. Dad, you are simply the best. My heart is aching. My eyes are stinging. But my pride is overflowing. Rest in peace, old mate. I will love and cherish you forever. Thanks, Rob and Johnny. And James, I invite you to come forward as well. As Harold's brother-in-law, thank you for giving me the right to speak. In 1960, when Anne brought Harold into our family home, 
I was overwhelmed by this good-looking guy with his hair stuck down with brill cream in a sort of cocky's comb like Elvis Presley or James Dean. As a favour, I was nine years old with a family of all girls. So when Robin and Anne got married, I was ecstatic that I finally had two brothers. As a favour to Dad, Harold took me for a week down to Perisher and allowed me to ski while he spent his time doing business in the Man from a Snowy Hotel. Seven years later, when our dad died in 1967 from a reoccurring illness in the Thai Burma Railway ordeal, Harold became my surrogate father. Both, both Harold and his brother Alan never judged me for having long hair, never had always supported me in trying to find my own way in life. 30 years later, when our mother had passed away, Harold took on the mantle of our super fund. Within the next five years, Harold had sizably improved all of our holdings, such was the investment skills of this wonderful man. I could spend hours talking about the river, but I just want to say we're still hurting from the losing dick as well. Personally, Harold has been my advisor, a mentor, mentor, a substitute father, a golfing buddy, a wonderful and supportive brother-in-law, the best guy you'd ever want to meet and have a beer with. Both Robin and Anne, my sisters, were both raised in Catholic boarding schools. Despite their petite looks, they're as tough as nails. As Harold's... With all her family and friends around her, I'm sure Anne will overcome this hurdle and carry on being a great support to her large entourage and family. We will all miss this charismatic and approachable man who has shone a wonderful light into all our lives. I'm sure up there, there's a star, a new star that glistens in the heavens with Harold's name on it. Thank you. Well, thank you for those beautiful reflections. We now move into a short time of prayer and then we continue with the reflections of the grandchildren. So let us pray. To you, O God, the dead do not die, and in death our life is changed, not ended. Hear our prayers and command the soul of your servant, Harold, to dwell with Abraham, your friend, and to be raised at the last on the great day of judgment. In your mercy, cleanse him of any sin which he may have committed through human frailty. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And alleluia, alleluia. Happy are those who die in the Lord. Let them rest from their labours, for their good deeds go with them. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I think one thing that should be coming through very loud and clear today is that relationships are very, very important. They define who we are, and in fact, that's what makes life meaningful. And we really thank God for the great man that Harold was and for all the many people that he has touched. In fact, I'm here again because of the relationship with the family and often brings me containers of frozen food to keep me going and is always concerned about others. And in fact, that was something that I noticed when I was called to the hospital immediately after Harold had passed away. All his children were thanking me for being there, thanking the doctors for doing all they could. They weren't concerned about themselves. And that's something obviously that Harold and Anne have taught them. So it's not to be taken for granted and can see that it would be, they're very proud of you. 
But obviously I come here as a person of faith. And so I just leave you with, with uh, a couple of points as to what is the basis of our hope. The thing that sets apart the Christian religion from the others is that God loved his creation so much that he became a part of it in Jesus of Nazareth. And that's what this gospel is about today. As he's going to his own death and he's just told Peter, you're going to betray him, his best friend, he says, but don't let your hearts be troubled. He understands we all make mistakes and he says, what I'm doing is I'm going to prepare a place for you. And that's what Easter is about. Our life doesn't change. Our life doesn't end. It simply changes. And so we know that the love that you have for Harold is something that continues on. We say that God, who is love, is where this comes to perfection. So this is the basis also of our hope. So yes, you're all invited back to, to the club afterwards to continue to share those memories, which is a good thing to do. But also for those with faith to look forward to the day when we will meet Harold again. So we now have our prayers of the faithful and I invite Martina to come forward. We pray for all of Harold's friends and family near and far who are feeling his loss today. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We thank God for the many years, fun times and adventures that we were all lucky enough to have had with Harold. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Give eternal rest to Harold. May he be forever in our hearts. Lord, hear us. We now have the messages from Harold's grandchildren, so I invite them to come forward. Grandad really knew how to make an impact on people, making everyone feel welcomed, worthy and supported. He was always so proud to introduce us and we were equally as proud to introduce him as our grandfather. Now that we don't have his famous introduction, let us introduce ourselves as the grandkids. This year was a big year for him we, as we celebrated his 30th year of being grandad and his second year of being great granddad, but we already knew he was great. So reflecting over the last 30 years, here are some of the moments that stand out. Perhaps one of our earliest memories is walking with granddad to the paper shop each morning. This originally was started at Good Hope Homestead and in more recent years to the Molly Mook News Agency. Us kids had clued in that this wasn't your average paper run though, but actually a 7 a.m. lolly haul. Our walks presented an opportunity for quality time before the rest of the house woke up and we knew if we weren't up and ready, you missed out. Grandad took, taught us to look for memorable experiences in life and not material objects. You showed us the importance of family and spending time together, but most of all, having fun. We thank you, Grandad, for the countless visits to Good Hope, Molly Mork and the Raiders games, and for planning special family trips to places like Jamboree, Dubbo Zoo, and Christmas at the Lawn Bowls. We are so lucky to have so many places that remind us of you. You always managed to impress us. Remember being briefed before, by Dad before your 80th birthday party that we weren't allowed to leave the party before you. This request didn't seem like much until we were taking selfies with you at 2 a.m. We quickly learned to never underestimate you and we now know that the penes are always last to leave. Grandad always wanted us to do our best. He loved us to be competitive. His running joke with Casey and I was that if we were taller than Nanny Ann on our 12th birthday, he would give us $50. It was our little joke with Grandad. For years, we would measure ourselves against Nanny Ann and tell him we were going to make it. 
Grandad knew it wasn't going to be hard for us to get there. Nanny Ann was growing down and we were growing up. The best part was he made a bet with us even though he knew that he was going to lose just to make us feel special. Thanks for always believing in us, Grandad. Grandad welcomed each one of us with open arms, and we mean that quite literally. When we went to his house, we'd run to the front door, peep through the window, and as we did our first knock, he'd jump out of his chair with his arms wide open. He always was able to make us feel comfortable and very special in his presence. He also taught us to be proud of ourselves, but also our achievements, and how we presented ourselves. We're laughing because he really didn't like our ripped jeans. <laughs> we remember calling Grandad at the first chance possible to tell him of our achievements. This could be anything from school to university to football, snow and water skiing. It could be big or small. He always made us feel like we'd achieved the impossible no matter what it was. Thank you for making it a privilege to be part of the Penne family. We wear our name and our number plates with pride and tremendous honour. We love and we miss you, Grandad. But we know that forever with you would not have been long enough. Farewell, our Grandad. We now move on to our photo tribute. Again. 
And together let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Light lies afford for the farewell. Dad, to me you were my hero, my guiding light. You were larger than life. To everyone that was lucky enough to have been part of your life, you were a true friend, a role model, a leader, a mentor, and a gentleman. You were selfless, a pillar of strength, and you always knew the right thing to say. Dad, you love to tell a story and be surrounded by family and friends. You are always happy to be the life of the party and the last one to leave. You had the ability to make everyone feel welcome and special when they were around you. Dad, we loved how your face would light up whenever you saw someone. We will miss those big blue eyes and cheeky smile. The hey hey greeting, a handshake or a hug. Mum, Rob, John and myself and our families have been overwhelmed with the love and support we have received over the last week or so. You were loved and respected. You were special to everyone that knew you. Here are some of the messages that I'd like to share that have come through to us over the last week or so. A man among men, a light that shined bright. Everyone was drawn to him because he was the centre. A gentleman is someone who puts more into this world than he takes out. As families together, we have loved and lived life to the fullest. There was always a story brewing or one being told. He was more to me than a true friend. He was my mentor. He will be sorely missed, but the memories will last forever. A rare man, a top bloke, a ripper of a man, a legend. Dad, our lives will never be the same without you, but your legacy lives on in all of us. On behalf of everyone who had the privilege of knowing you, it has been an honour to be your friend, your grandchild, your son, your daughter, your brother and your wife. We will miss you forever. Thanks, Eliza. So obviously our ceremony doesn't conclude here today. On the back of the booklet, it says that Harold's family would like to thank you for all your love and for your support. And so following the service, please join the family at Gungarden Lakes, 110 Gundaroo Drive, uh, Nichols, to continue to celebrate Harold's life. Do you please stand as a sign of respect for our committal and farewell. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Harold, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem.
Will the pallbearers please come forward? Now the end is near And so I face the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few But then again Too few to mention I did What I had to do And saw it through Without exemption I planned Each charted course Each careful step Along the byway More, much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off More than I could chew But through it all When there was dark
Yes, it was my way. You sheltered me. you 